My name is Mike DeLaCluse. I'm the president of Lessman Instrument Company. I'd like to thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us for Weighing for Movable Tanks and Vessels. Today, Steve Watson of Minipea Intec is going to talk about the challenges of getting continuous and periodic weighing for tanks and vessels on wheels. In this 45-minute webinar, Steve's going to talk about process of improvement through weighing mobile tanks and vessels, some of the hardware requirements for weighing mobile vessels, uh, evaluating your application, some of the limitations, uh, an application checklist, some of the things you need to think about for stationary uh, versus movable. Uh, Steve currently serves as product and technical trainer for Minibay in tech with a focus on complex tanks and hopper applications, as well as high resolution industrial scale installations. He brings more than 35 years of experience with industrial weighing. Uh, Steve was one of our first webinar speakers we welcome him back and thank him for sharing his knowledge uh, during this exclusive session for our customers. Uh, the phone lines will be muted. If you have a question, there is a question tool built into GoToWebinar. I will be monitoring it and making sure that the questions get answered. With that, I'll turn it over to you, Steve. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, really appreciate the opportunity to come in and talk again. It's been has been a while, uh, but uh, a lot of changes in the weighing industry and some of those we're going to discuss today. Uh, in, in particular, we're going to look at portable tank weighing and uh, my little tagline here, weigh in place or weigh any place, is a uh, discipline that has been, I wouldn't say limited to the pharmaceutical industry, but very, very strong there. They have uh, a lot of uh, applications that require uh, weighing in place without a separate scale. So we're going to look at some of those today and uh, some of the ins and outs of what we can do and uh, how how you may be able to adapt this to your particular applications. Just kind of a quick agenda here of what we plan to cover. I'm going to make a, just a couple of comments about a name there you may not be familiar with, Minabia Intech. I'm going to talk about the, the concept of fully integrated weighing, meaning that the load cells, the tank, the instrumentation and controls are all on one uh, self-contained platform. And then design considerations, which is very, very important in having a successful mobile tank weighing system. And then finally, we'll cover some kind of checklist stuff that will allow you to evaluate your own application, decide whether or not mobile weighing is right for you, and uh, what might make more sense uh, possibly as a floor scale application. Unfortunately, uh, at Minabay Intech, we can take care of both ends of those choices. So let's kind of get started here. But something kind of funny happened when I first worked on this webinar, as I do most of the time when I produce these things. The first thing I, I do is uh, Google my subject matter just to see if something new has popped up on the horizon. And <clears throat> to my surprise, when I Googled going mobile, something very old popped up. Oop, I got myself a bit out of order here. I'll come back. Uh, uh, the uh, who popped up here as the going mobile. <laughs> it was almost funny. One of my favorite albums from the 70s uh, came back alive. Uh, I think we have the, the endorsement of Roger Daltrey here, at least hope so, for Mobile Wang. And uh, thought that uh, it was just kind of interesting. I don't think I've ever had that happen to me before where something old came up as opposed to something new. So let me kind of flip back and get right back in order again. Minibia Intech, as I mentioned before, is a company that you may not have heard of. Uh, as you can see from the slide, we've been around quite a long time now, since 1951. They are by and large an OEM manufacturer, and they have a very large presence in day-to-day -day, uh, tools and uh, electronics that you probably, probably own right now. As a matter of fact, if you have a cell phone, um, they make virtually all of the backlights for the cell phones worldwide. So they're uh, very, very strong, but a, a name that has been kind of hidden all this time since the, since the 50s. They are uh, uh, specializing almost completely in component level, especially with uh, miniature ball bearings uh, for military applications. Now, Minabea Intech is part of the measuring components group for Minabea. And I'm very happy to say that uh, for the first time, we are seeing the name Minabea as uh, part of our name. So where we were formerly known as Sartorius Intech. You may remember us from those days. 
involved in weighing of high precision laboratory balances and industrial scales. It was actually split off in uh, 2015 to have the industrial group uh, under the parent company, uh, Minabea Intech. So just so you are a little bit more familiar with the name, and we'll go on past that. So here's the question, why go mobile? I mean, it seems a little bit counterintuitive, and it's probably, there's a good chance that you've been told even that it's not possible. Uh, there are a lot of reasons that might make it impossible, which we will talk about in some detail today. But let's look at the applications where you might need to go mobile. Uh, if you have an application where you have a requirement to continuously monitor the weight of a particular tank, you can't really do that on a single scale and occupy the scale full time. So there's um, the requirement to have a separate self-contained weighing system attached directly to the tank, especially in fermentation, which is probably why we've seen so much application for this in the pharmaceutical industry. There's zero floor space consumption. Uh, you could have a tank and you have load cells that are integrated uh, instantly uh, as part of the tank and occupy zero additional space. There's no need for one size fit all kind of stationary scale. Uh, you can actually customize, if you look at the right hand drawing here, or photograph, you can see three different size tanks. Each of those would be outfitted with different size load cells. So you get a better accurate reading than a one size fits all scale. The hygiene qualities, um, hygienic qualities are absolutely superb. That's certainly critical for food and beverage in most of the industries that we would sell load cells and weighing equipment to. Uh, you can mix and weigh simultaneously. We'll spend uh, quite a bit of time here today on explaining how that is possible. Uh, you've probably had the experience in the past where you've tried to mix and found, uh, when you try to weigh at the same time, a very unstable scale reading. And finally, there's more flexibility with floor space design. You're not locked into any particular uh, existing configuration. Kind of wanted to give an example of um, multiple component weighing, kind of done the old way and the new way. If you're using a, a remote floor scale and you have a uh, mixer that is uh, part of the process, there are a number of steps that you need to go to just to complete a complete batch. I mean, first thing you have to do, of course, disconnect the mixer and roll it to the floor scale to get an empty tear weight. Uh, the, hopefully the floor scale is somewhere uh, not too inconvenient for you, but uh, the chances are good that you're going to be spending a fair bit of uh, leg time moving the uh, empty tank to uh, some distant location in your facility. Uh, the second step, of course, you could fill the first ingredient directly while it's on the scale, but then you've suddenly got to move it back to uh, its original location for mixing purposes or to reconnect. You reconnect, start the mixer, uh, begin to add more ingredients. And since you can't really add ingredients without weighing them out, you've got to either move it back to the original scale or most times you have a smaller scale that's located closer to the mixing area. So you weigh each ingredient out separately and um, add it to the, the mixed batch. And finally, when you're done with all of the ingredients, you still need to get a complete total recheck. Now, you can't check it on your small scale that you may have used to weigh out ingredients. You've got to roll it back to the, the floor scale. Again, maybe close, hopefully, maybe not so close in many cases. But if you're using a load cell equipped tank and everything is self-contained, the process is extremely simple. Uh, you start the mixer, tear it, add ingredient, and repeat the process. You don't move anything. You leave the mixer in place. It runs continuously if necessary, or stop and start as you please. Um, everything is very simple, very localized, and saves an awful lot of legwork. I mean, step two, ah, I'd take an early lunch with all that extra time that I had as compared to rolling it to a remote floor scale. And I think the biggest problem that most of our customers see is when they do have to roll it to a remote floor scale, there's a good chance that uh, someone else has got another process also in operation and you not only have spent the time moving the tank but you've also spent the time waiting for it to be the floor scale to become available so a lot of things that are simplified when you do everything in a self-contained fashion 
So what could possibly go wrong with a floor scale? Boy, aren't those famous last words? Um, they, uh, a lot of things can go wrong. There are basically two ways that you can use a floor scale. The first one is, is a very common installation that you probably have in your facility now, called flush-mounted floor scales. The flush-mounted floor scales are, um, there's a pit that's dug um, in the concrete typically. There's a liner in the pit that um, contains the concrete and keeps it all intact. Uh, then the scale fits exactly in that uh, dimension of the pit so that when you roll something onto it, it's completely flush with the floor. Problem is, and perhaps the biggest problem, is point number one. Pit-mounted scales are notorious bacteria collection points. There are a number of uh, pits that are designed with curved edges. There are a number of different attempts of flushing out these pits. Unfortunately, there's almost always a crack or a crevice or a corner where uh, debris and bacteria build up. Um, the scale platform itself is quite heavy. Nobody ever wants to lift it up, look underneath, and see what's really going on below the scale. It's a uh, heavy, complicated job to do so and difficult to clean out when you find the problem. The pit-mounted scales do limit your future floor usage plans. Uh, processes change. Things change all the time. And a pit-mounted floor scale uh, in one decade may not have the same usefulness in another decade where the entire business has changed. Uh, what you're left with if you decide that the pit-mounted scale or a scale at all is no longer useful is a hole in the floor. Something that can be uh, expensive to repair and replace and perhaps even impossible if that's in a clean room environment. Uh, Pit-mounted scales are very difficult to retrofit in an existing building, and we see this quite a bit in clean room applications. If we are having to uh, jackhammer concrete, that's just not going to work in most existing facilities, not if there is actually production going on. So if you already have an environment in which you need to get your weighing done, it may not be a, uh, a good, uh, good solution to plan on having a pit-mounted floor scale. And our limitations to low profile, which are pitless scales, which is definitely a big advantage. It's a big step forward over pit-mounted scales, but there's still some liabilities here as well. Um, the ramps, of course, while they are uh, very low, uh, they're only up to perhaps one, one and a half inches uh, from the floor, still get increasingly heavy, especially as you roll a, uh, a very heavy tank that's gaining weight as components are added to it. If you have a tank that is uh, four or five hundred, a thousand pounds, even moving it up a, uh, a low profile ramp can be difficult and uh, uh, perhaps too difficult for some of your employees to handle. The continuous mixing on floor scales will cause unstable readings in just about every case. Uh, the design of the load cells that are used in all floor scales are perfect for stationary momentary reading. They do not work well when there is agitation or other temperature changes going on above the, uh, the platform level. Uh, almost in every case, uh, when you turn on the mixer on a floor scale, the uh, change in weight reading will be very obvious and too unstable for actual usage. Even with very short ramps on low profile, we've had some problems with the safety officers and a number of our big customers. Um, the, the problem with a, a ramp, um, even if you can navigate up the ramp uh, easily enough, you usually are looking forward. It is very much a tripping hazard, and we've had uh, quite a lot of concerns where um, even with small, short, and low, low ramps, uh, the possibility of people carrying material in their hands and not looking down uh, as they approach the scale, uh, possibly tripping and falling, uh, is a serious safety concern for a lot of our big customers. So um, while the low profile pitless scales are certainly a, uh, a big step forward over the uh, flush mounted scales, they still have their limitations where tank weighing is concerned. In fact, if you really look at the whole picture, you're kind of navigating around building fixtures, other tanks or through doorways and so on to get to a remote scale, in some cases may even be impossible. You may 
Um, the only other option would be to equip the tank with the load cells or purchase a separate floor scale to be used in a different area. It just may not be possible to move a tank from point A to B in a lot of congested areas. So we'll talk for a second about some of the design considerations for mobile tanks because they are definitely different than what you see on a floor scale type design. The problem and the solution really begins with the type of load cells that are being used. So on the left hand side, you see what is called a shear beam load cell. This is a classic load cell that is used in virtually all floor scales. Uh, it works well on a floor scale. It is uh, rigidly mounted at the top and rigidly mounted to the bottom frame of the scale and senses vertical uh, forces very, very well, in fact, quite accurately. The, uh, the problem is that um, it doesn't like to see forces as the, uh, as the tank is being rolled across the scale because it sees those uh, horizontal forces actually as weight, which are, is, is an incorrect reading. So until you stop and stabilize and all the sloshing is stopped in the tank, it's very difficult to get a stable reading on a floor scale uh, with a shear beam. Now on the right-hand side, you see what we call vertical compression cells. These are cells that are made expressly for tank weighing systems. They are not rigidly mounted. Uh, the little box you see here to the right is a uh, mounting kit. So where on the shear beam cell, this is directly mounted to the frame and uh, top and bottom. Uh, this is the device that's actually mounted top and bottom and the load cell itself actually fits inside. And there's a number of reasons for that. Uh, we need a mounting kit around it because this is not permanently attached to the tank. Uh, the benefit of it floating is that it has the ability to absorb much of the motion that can occur in a portable application. Uh, but at the same time, um, it senses only the vertical forces that are coming at actually measuring the weight that's placed on it. It's only the weight that is placed on it and sensed vertically is a valid weight value for your purposes. I kind of look a little bit more closely at shear beams and how they work and um, where the situations uh, can create a problem. In a perfect world, you've got a stationary item sitting on top of the load cell, on top of the, the platform of the scale, and this is attached to the load cell. It's stable, it's not moving, and you get a perfect downforce and it represents a, a very accurate weight. Works great for uh, non-tank applications. Uh, unfortunately, in tank applications, we have problems with temperature, for example. You may have heating jackets on the tank, and the heating jackets will, uh, will cause the load cell to shrink or grow. Now, if you're not familiar with a load cell and the technology and why that's important, across the top of this load cell, sometimes embedded in the center, usually across the top, is a bridge of resistors that are in a, um, a sealed, uh, like a silicone-type solution, it's laminated directly to the load cell. Those resistors actually sense the weight change and bend. And as the resistors bend, they change resistance. So as there more load is added, more resistance, um, the resistance change shows up and it shows up as a weight change value when we convert it electronically. The problem is that when it sees a force this direction because of temperature, heating and cooling are just ambient temperature changes in the in the room from morning to night. It senses that also as a weight change because this, this block of aluminum here will actually shrink and cause a deformation, deformation of the, the strain gauge and it will actually show up as a weight value, which is a problem. You get uplift problems, which are also significant when you, when you have a rolling tank. If you've tried to roll a tank across the floor, I don't think I've ever missed a, a drain grate yet. And the possibility of bouncing over thresholds and other obstacles that might be in the way that you might not see are going to cause this entire, um, the frame and the entire tank to uplift on this cell. And that uplift will also be interpreted as a weight value and create a problem as far as getting an accurate reading. Probably the worst one is the torsional forces. If you have a mixer on a tank that's sitting on a shear beam load cell, as you see in the photo, the mixer will cause a torsional force on the load cell as it starts and stops. It's actually twisting the, of course, the material inside, um, the viscosity of the material, 
is uh, is going to also have an impact. I mean, obviously, twisting powders is going to put a bigger twist on the load cell than twisting, a, uh, for example, water, which may have a low viscosity. But all everything that is turned and agitated in that tank is going to twist uh, horizontally and sideways on the load cell and cause an, an incorrect error, an incorrect uh, weight error. Like here's a picture of one that kind of shows you how it looks in, in the real world here. Uh, it is mounted rigidly at the top and at the bottom. Um, any, any force that is sensed coming this direction or this direction um, or twisting around it will bend this resistor bridge on top of the load cell and give you an errant number. So the solution that we, we propose is something along this line, and this is the type of uh, mount that we would use in a, a relatively large portable application, uh, perhaps a thousand liter or so. Um, what you're looking at on the left-hand side is this all-important mounting kit. The mounting kit itself has got a number of features in it that allow the vertical compression load cell to sense only vertical weight values. Now, if you look over here on the right-hand side, you can see the a load cell in here, we actually flip it upside down and there's a tiny little load button in here that is the only contact surface um, on, the, on the bottom side of the, of the, uh, the mounting kit. And it actually has a concave, or convex, I should say, top to it that leaves very little surface area touching. So it's actually allowed to pivot, if you will, right, left, front, back, uh, and absorb some of those forces that may be coming in as a result of temperature torque or what have you. Uh, but there are a couple of other very important features in the mounting kit and the way it interfaces with the vertical compression cell. Let's kind of take a look at those right now. If we look at the, the actual mounting kit here, and you see the first item here, you see this rod going across the side. This is the device that actually constrains the tank from twisting um, through torsional forces from a mixer or some other scraper or other thing that would be twisting the material inside. That, that rod um, actually holds the entire tank in place and allows the load cell to remain in a stationary position. Uh, if this rod were not here, we'd be seeing uh, some, some uh, less than satisfactory numbers uh, just reflecting the twisting of the tank. On the other side of the, of the mounting kit, you'll see a lift-up protection. That allows us to be sure that if you bump over a threshold or if you hit a drain or, or something else on the floor, that it doesn't um, separate and have the load cell uh, come loose. Now, of course, having the ability to swivel inside the mounting kit as our load cells do, we have to be careful that since they're not bolted in place, we have to be sure they don't get away from us. So this lift-off protection here is very critical uh, to be sure that it can only lift a couple of millimeters uh, up or down uh, before it's constrained back in its original position, keeping the load cell safe and secure. This side is kind of a more of a convenience thing, but it's uh, if you've ever had to replace a load cell on a stationary tank, you'll appreciate this very much. Uh, this is a uh, integrated lifting mechanism. It's just a threaded bolt and nut. That allows you to, without a tank jack, if you should have a load cell failure or something goes wrong in the system, or it needs to be shipped somewhere or sent to a different uh, facility, it allows you to lock up the entire system or lift it and remove the old load cell, put in the new one, start weighing again. So it's a, a very convenient, easy way without having to bring in a lot of jacks and assemblies and things like that. Finally, the question that comes up most of the time is this three leg versus four. And this is, this is the one where I must say is, it can be very counterintuitive to the, the best way to build a tank. I like to use my bar stool exam here because it really does uh, point out some of the changes that you may not uh, recognize when you see this in a, in a tank, uh, tank design. The, um, the three legged bar stool here actually is, if you've ever sat on either one of these two, Regardless of the level of the floor, all three legs are always going to be in constant contact. Uh, it's never going to move back and forth. It's never uh, going to teeter on two legs. Uh, a four-legged bar stool, on the other hand, is something that's going to be um, subject to the level of the floor. And imagine that each of these uh, legs on the bar stools here 
are actually um, connected to load cells. If any one of those legs is not in full contact with the, the floor or the floor, the lower frame of the tank, you will have an incorrect weeding. We have to have all load cells in the system contributing equally at all times. That automatically takes care of itself in the three-legged design. So the question has to be raised. Okay, I've got a tank that we should only have three load cells on, but I have four legs. I have wheels that are four or six wheels. How do we accommodate that? Well, you can have as many tank wheels or legs or support as you wish. However, you can never have more than three waypoints for portable way. Now, he would say, how do we accomplish that? Well, the design is actually, is actually quite simple. It's called a sandwich design. Um, here's an example of one here that we've done on some portable tanks. Uh, basically, what you see is a, an upper frame that the uh, tank is resting on and then a lower frame in which the load cells are resting on and supported by the four wheels. But there are only three load cells. There's one here, there's one here, and there's one here on the other side of the tank. So no matter what happens with the wheels, even if one wheel is off the ground, if all the wheels were off the ground, you would still have the same reading because the tank is still resting on three load cells. It's not gonna make any change. So Level becomes much less of a problem for us with, with uh, uh, using a three-point way system. And not to mention you save some money. Uh, it's you know 25 cent, 25% less to buy something with three instead of four. So this is a, this is a really good design that we highly recommend. And we've, we've actually made even some, some changes uh, on that, which we'll come up to here shortly. In fact, we'll do it right now. Um, Load cell mounting on portable tanks is not quite as straightforward as you might think, just because of the way people tend to move these tanks from place to place. The tendency is for users to basically just push on the tank at any available spot and roll it across the room. The constrainers that we showed you are represented in the drawing here and here, and then there's a constrained version here on the third leg. But the difficulty for us is that if, a, if um, uh, a user was to push this tank from this side, we have no advantage of these two constrainers. There's very little holding it in place, and only this one is kind of holding the whole system together. If you push from this direction, of course, we've got two very strong constrainers. This side, everything will work well, and you have the benefit of two constrainers pushing from the, the lower side. But two of the four sides are a bit problematic for us, and we just know that people will not always push towards the bottom of the tank, they'll push to the top and uh, we have to deal with that. Now there is a good solution for that. And it's very simple. We simply turn the two mounting kits at, um, at 90 degree, not 90, 180 degree angles so that you see they're kind of offset diagonally on two sides and then square here. With this kind of a tank design, you can push from any direction and you will not upset the tank, you will not shift the load cells everything will stay in place and it'll be weighing accurately uh, when you get to your final destination. So this very simple design change actually saves an awful lot of, of problems. But there's a couple of other ways that do it even more and we really uh, highly recommend some of, these, uh, some of these concepts. The biggest one, in fact, let me, if I can go back just for a second, I'm sorry. Uh, what we like to see is what you see here. Um, here is a push bar that has the instrumentation mounted on it. It's mounted to the lower uh, framework here. So it's not touching the tank. So when you touch the instrumentation, it doesn't affect the tank weight. When you push this, the, the entire tank, it does not take anything out of, out of level or out of sync. Uh, there's no impact at all. So it's a very good design to have a, a push bar included with your tank uh, assembly. So I'm gonna move ahead. Okay, making the choice, mobile or floor scales? That's, that's a tough question at times, but let's, let's have a look and see what we've got. You really need to carefully consider your application on a couple of different levels. Uh, first of all, the tank design itself. You know, use load cells that are appropriate to the capacity for the tank. You're only going to weigh one tank. You might as well get a load cell that is sized exactly for that tank. 
That will dramatically pick up your accuracy, especially if you have very small tanks that you might be weighing otherwise on a high capacity floor scale. You're not gonna get the level of accuracy that you could if we very um, uh, appropriately size the load cells to the weight of the tank. Filling and discharge piping should have some sort of a quick disconnect. Obviously the tank is in motion. Uh, it would be uh, certainly to your advantage to, to be able to uh, disconnect piping and discharge uh, filling piping very quickly and easily. Uh, provision for a push bar, we just talked about a second ago. That I think is one of the more important things that most people forget about. Everything is all perfectly mounted and people continue to push on the tank itself. Um, it just leads to less than accurate results and usually we, we start to see some shifting of the load cells in the, in the mounting kits if they push it from the wrong direction. So push bar just kind of solves a lot of those problems and, and also provides a very convenient mounting point for the instrumentation. Uh, the weight display must be accessible, but yes, as we said a second ago, if you can mount it on the push bar, that's certainly the way to do it. The instrumentation you need is really a wild card. There's a lot of different tank scenarios. Some of them are very simple. Some of them are what we just call weight only. It's a visual read. Um, it's kind of a, prog um, a sort of a progress check on the uh, formulation or the, the process. Um, and uh, then there are others that are far more sophisticated. They may be uh, data collection instrumentation where we're sending data to a, a network system of some sort or integrating into some custom software. Uh, there may be requirements where you're operating the unit in a hazardous area, that is uh, where you have explosive chemicals or other compounds around that would require FM approved equipment. Fortunately, all load cells, all tank load cells themselves are already approved for all levels of hazardous operation. Instrumentation, however, is not. It is, uh, uh, it can be, and it has to be ordered special. Uh, there are a number of, of uh, hazardous area instruments on the market that will pass all FM uh, classes and divisions, but you have to be very specific about that. Some do not. And then, of course, washdown protection. If you're going to be in a high pressure washdown uh, scenario, you, you will want to be sure that you have instrumentation that is able to withstand a direct hit with hot soapy water. All these things are available, but you have to be very specific about how you're going to use the tank as you start to think about what you're going to need for your portable tank design. Instrumentation compatibility is probably the question we get most of the time. We, we are often told that uh, with, from our customers that they have a particular brand of instrument that has a proprietary communication protocol to their proprietary software, and there is no way they can change. Well, the good news is they don't have to change. Um, we are able to, uh, to we do produce analog-based load cells that are very, very common in the industry. In fact, the most common type of load cell is an analog load cell. And there is a universal standard for these. So if you're using competitive instrumentation, you can use pretty much any brand of vertical compression load cell, and it will it will uh, it'll work perfectly, uh, and you'll be able to maintain your your compatibility. On the other hand, you've got a problem with digital load cells. Now, digital load cells are relatively rare on the market. They are designed primarily for uh, very heavy loads, vehicle weighing. You will see digital load cells oftentimes in roadside uh, truck scales, that sort of thing. Um, the reason is that a digital load cell is easier to calibrate uh, because of uh, uh, certain memory locations it has and so on without getting into too much technical detail. Um, it is easier uh, from a uh, uh, reproducing calibration uh, routines and so on. Um, and the reason that we're critical about that is because if a, if you have a truck scale that has a 100,000 pound capacity, not so easy to um, load and unload weights, test weights uh, continuously. This is very often not the case for portable tank weighing. Portable tank weighing by nature is usually limited to about a 2,000 pound tank maximum. Uh, there is no need to go with a digital load cell, but be aware if you are using digital instrumentation, it is certainly connected to digital load cells, and they are very specifically designed 
to be used only with a single manufacturer. So if you have a if you have a Minavia Intec digital load cell, you will also have to have a Minavia Intec um, compatible instrument. So that's the one caution I would give you. But again, it's r relatively unusual. Um, I would say even most of the time uh, we have uh, one brand of load cell and a completely different brand of instrumentation used uh, quite frequently and quite successfully. Okay, so we'll go through a quick checklist here um, and then uh, see if there's any, we have any questions from, uh, from the group out here. And I, uh, I'm hoping that we've been able to answer some, some of the mysteries about portable tank weighing. Uh, first of all, as we just kind of made up a quick evaluation tool here, spaces at a premium, especially in clean room installation, there is no choice but a mobile tank. Um, if any of you are operating with clean room applications, you will know how critical space is and to place a perhaps a four foot by four foot floor scale in a very limited space is just not a good practical idea. That's where the portable tanks do extremely well. Now, depending on the accuracy, your accuracy requirements, and I would say this, most uh, portable tank applications and even stationary tank applications rarely exceed what we call 15,000 divisions. This would be a a relatively high accuracy level, but not an extreme accuracy level. If you are in a um, an application that requires extraordinarily high accuracy, perhaps one part in 30,000 or more, you may have to do that on a floor scale. Uh, the realities of and the physics of, of mobile weighing really dictates that we limit our accuracy range to one part in 15,000. Uh, process materials that might be located in, in multiple locations. It's usually easier to move the, the scale to the, uh, the material than the material to the scale, in which case we highly recommend a mobile tank type design. If you have a wide range of tanks, uh, that's definite. Again, uh, you can customize small tanks, small load cell, large tanks, large load cell, get the maximum accuracy possible. Bacteria-free operation. If that's an absolute uh, critical uh, feature for you, this is certainly the way to go. Uh, everything is above ground. There's no hidden uh, collect, collecting of bacteria and things that could, uh, could cause a, a contamination problem for you with a portable weighing system. Now, if you have many, many tanks of similar capacity, just from a sheer uh, cost point of view, it could be cost prohibitive to to equip dozens of tanks with individual load cells and weighing, you may have to go to a single floor scale or two just from a, a cost perspective. But again, I would emphasize the fact the tanks really should be similar in capacity. Uh, if the tanks are varied in capacity, you're probably sacrificing some accuracy by using a floor scale. Continuous weight monitoring, as we said before, nobody can tie up a scale for hours, days, or weeks at a time, just because the weight needs to be monitored continuously. And then if there's agitation of the contents, as we saw in the earlier slides, where you have a, um, a, a mixing that's going on that would affect a floor scale, it does not affect the portable tank uh, system. And then if you have need for simultaneous weighing of multiple tanks, again, a portable tank is a very, very good solution for that. You can have multiple uh, uh, multiple tanks uh, taking different readings at the same time and still able to accumulate the data in a, a timely fashion. So that's our checklist and actually that's our presentation for the day. As we wrap up, we'll see if anybody has any questions. Uh, Steve, thank you very much for your presentation. If anybody in the audience does have any specific application questions, feel free to give, give us a call at 800-9-LESSMAN or 800-953-7626. If you do not know your account manager, uh, feel free to ask for me, Mike DeLaCluz, and I'll make sure you get taken care of. You can also reach me at my email, which is mikeD at lessman.com. Our next webinar is going to be presented by Gordon Sanderson of the Zurich Valve, and will be uh, uh, at 9 a.m. on October 26th. Gordon is going to talk about control valve applications, especially those that uh, can give you cavitation problems. It'll explore why it happens and how to prevent it.
If you, know, if you want to know more about the technologies with supply, please follow us on social media. Dan's blog is very active and has tons of great tips. All of our webinars are posted both on our website and uh, on our Lessman Instrument Co. YouTube channel. If there are some topics you'd like us to cover in our webinars, please send me an email with the subject. We have access to lots of product and process specialists, so let me know and we'll see what we can get covered. You can send that to my email at mikeD at lessman.com. Steve, at this point, we still don't have any questions, so I think we'll go ahead and conclude today's webinar. Thank you all for attending. Thank you very much.